The Taiwanese index is up around 19 points, quite flat, but with some positive bias. A lot of these emerging market currencies are getting stronger against the U.S. The Supreme Court takes sue moto cognizance of the gruesome rape and murder of a trainee doctor at R.G. Kar Medical College in Kolkata. 24,477. And that's the first level that the market needs to stay above. 24,618 is where the Nifty is at 616. That's about 70 points higher. The market still looks very exciting. Around 41 gigawatt of uh, thermal power capacities uh, was under resolution, of which 25 is already resolved. The market, it's a slow grind down to the flat line for the benchmark indices. I will try to maintain uh, the same number. In last one week, we have seen it come off to levels of around $5,550. We did see a sharp spike. We've come up from the highs, but still in the green so far for the Nifty. Sharpest strategies, top market trends, unmatched perspectives, the trading day's most comprehensive roundup. Stay ahead with NSE Closing Bell, broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswald Studios in Mumbai. Well, that was a day so far, and it has been a quiet day if you look at the Nifty, but broader markets are doing just fine. This is Closing Bell, last hour of trade coming up from the CNBC TV 18 Muturos Fall Studios. I'm Prashant with me, my colleagues Reema and Surbhi. Guys, I got off Hi, good afternoon. Well, yeah, I guess quiet start and some volatility hitting some of the Asian markets again. For instance, the South Korean market, the Nikkei, they were actually looking at a lot of profit taking today. So by that stretch, maybe uh, not that bad, some consolidation. No, absolutely. I think Kospi was up 2% uh, on mm. Friday, so maybe they're a bit yeah. of pullback. In Japan, of course, has been all over the place, 10% down and then recovering almost most of it, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, it's so... a huge, deep, large capital market, yet it moves like a mid cap <laughs> stock. <laughs> As I think the uh, Financial Times wrote an article saying that why is Japan moving like a penny stock? Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it was uh, it was a uh, shocker that, uh, of course, the week before, that is, I mean, on that, uh, I think it was the 2nd of August, or um, it was the f or it was the 5th, it was the Monday when markets moved like that. Anyway, let's just quickly uh, run you through uh, what's happening right now, uh, which is, at least on the Nifty, not very much. 30, 40 points higher is what you have. Uh, so we are trading above the 20-day, which essentially is the first kind of uh, prerequisite for the market to stay sort of healthy and then look up and wonder about how high and where, where it can get to. But it is nowhere close to getting to that gap area, which is 24,686. Uh, and it's been uh, in this zone for a while, 24,577. But the trajectory is higher. Nifty Bank, true to character, is the weaker of the two. Uh, it never got to the 20-day on Friday, while the Nifty crossed it. Uh, and it is weaker, slightly down, about a quarter percent or so. Mid-caps are up, but it's a small-cap index, which is up 1.5%. And that is essentially the star of today's trading day. Uh, that's the mid-cap index, a quarter, nothing. But the small-cap index is the one which has got about a 300-point pop. And that is essentially basically the reason why, I mean, I think uh, portfolios will be feeling quite well uh, because uh, so many of these, uh, you know, smaller names are uh, jump popping up 5, 10, 15 percent in some cases, which some of them we will get to as we go along. Prima. But after uh, Friday's more than 2% rally on the benchmark indices, it's good to see that the markets are holding on to those gains and consolidating. But we've consolidated in a pretty tight band. So the Nifty range today has been just about 100 points. Banks are underperforming a bit. So the Nifty Banking Index is down close to about 150 points. But in that, the PSU banks are outperforming. So the Nifty PSU Banking Index is a gain of 1, 1.5%. One the problem is for private sector financials banks, uh, large ones like an Axis Bank, ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank too, is under pressure. Remember today, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman will be holding a performance review meeting with the public sector banks and the PSU banks, so whether it's a Bank of Baroda, Canara Bank, Union Bank, all of them higher in trade. IT2 is having a good day. It was the uh, standout performer on Friday and it continues with the up move today. The Nifty IT index is up nearly 0.8.9% with LTI Mindtree leading the charge in the frontline pack and metals as a pack. Uh, so Tata Steel, Hindalco, JSW Steel up and about. The Nifty metal index will also come up for you on your screen. Well, uh, on the mid-cap screen, actually the good news is that uh, if you look beyond the index, the index will tell you that there's just about a 
quarter percent sort of an increase coming through. But the good news is that if you look at the advanced decline ratio, that tells you a much better story. Because even after a you know, pretty range-bound, lackluster kind of a day, you've got almost 1,800 stocks advancing and about 600, 650 stocks on the declining side. So beneath the surface, there's plenty of action. And I'll just take some names to highlight. Some of these infrastructure plays, they've had a good run today. So stocks like IRB up about 3%, NCC is up about 5%. Uh, these are some of the names. And on the infrastructure play, I mean, we've been discussing BEML since morning because of the approval for a lot of the metro orders coming through. Uh, and that stock's been up about 3 to 4% uh, right throughout the session. But go beyond, even beyond news. I mean, look at a Godfrey Phillips, about 11% right now. Angel 1, 9% is the surge. IIFL Finance suddenly moving 11 to 12% higher. I know I'm, I'm sort of... Uh, Taking so many names, we'll quickly put them on the screen. That's just the, the nature of the mid-cap market. You go beyond the headline, and there's a lot of movement out there. Uflex, 11%. Something like an Imagica world, which typically doesn't come up on the screen that often, up about 9-10% as well. So, basically, beyond the indices, there's a lot of individual stock-level action going on. A lot of the PSUs are having a good run as well. Uh, but yes, the headline market seems to be in consolidation mode. So let's uh, quickly kickstart the show and get you some trading ideas to begin with. Mitesh is with us. Mitesh, good afternoon. Uh, what have you made of the index consolidation today and what are the ideas now for the last hour? So I think the index, you know, basically, uh, is not able to get past the higher level because the bank nifty is not participating. And I was looking at the hourly charts of the bank nifty. It's not very negative. In fact, uh, post the big movement which happened on Friday, this looks like to be a mild pullback. And if we can, if the bank if we can hold above 50,200 uh, to 20, I think it should make one more attempt towards uh, 50,000, 5,800 zones. And if, they, if, if it manages to clear that, then it should be even better. So in that sense, I think I'll keep uh, maintaining a long bias. Right now I have a buy on Virgil Paints, it's managed to get past this 200 average uh, and is trading well above that now. So by here with the stop at about 549 for targets of 590. And uh, we had HPCL as a recommendation earlier. BPCL uh, is the current recommendation. Buy BPCL with a stop at about 338 for targets of 360. Thank you very much uh, for that. From 76 to 146, that's been the journey of Ola uh, in a span of just six trading sessions. Last week, remember? Uh, the two-wheeler announced, the company announced its foray into the electric motorcycle segment with the launch of the Roadster series. Uh, the stock continues to electrify the street. It's practically doubled since its listing. Sudarshan is joining in with some more details and numbers. Sudarshan. What a move the stock has had since listing. IPO issue price was rupees 76 per share and the stock had listed almost at the same price. But since then, stock has almost doubled and, and in today's trade, it has hit intraday record high of rupees 146 per share. That is up 92% since its listing price. Also, it has added market cap of more than rupees 25,000 crore. On the listing day, its market cap was rupees 40,000 crore and in today's current, at current level, the market cap is almost rupees 65,000 crore. But remember, Free, flo free float is only 17% uh, of total outstanding shares. What does it mean? It means only 17% of total outstanding shares is available for trade. Talking about the recent announcements, company launched Made in India 4680 Bhat battery cell and its CEO says it, he promised faster charging and more energy storage via this battery. Also, it has entered motorcycle segment, launched roadster portfolio starting at rupees 74,999. Talking about the brokerage, it just has one coverage as of now. HSBC has initiated coverage with a buy call and target is rupees 140 per share. It says despite its conservative view on electric vehicles, it believes. Ola is worth investing in as Ola's go-to-market and localization efforts are noteworthy and should attract investors looking to play electrification theme in India. And target price implies FY28 price to sales of 2.9 times and EV to EBITDA of 39 times for Ola Electric as per HSBC. Thank you very much for that. In fact, earlier today, we did catch up with HSBC's uh, Yogesh Agarwal, the author of that uh, note on Ola Electric. We chatted uh, with him about the EV penetration in India, competition, the motorcycle, it's bet on battery. Listen in to his views. At least for the next two years, things will be better. And it will be driven by two, three reasons. One, 
the costs have finally started to come down, especially the battery cost. I mean, uh, just from last year, uh, the cathode uh, prices or costs are down almost 60% from the peak. And uh, so that should help. And secondly, I think uh, we've all been uh, looking for a push factor, just pushing electric vehicles in the market, but we need to create a pull factor. So, and that pull factor from the customers will come when there are more options uh, in the market. So next year, we're going to see a series of launches in four wheelers and in two wheelers anyway, the launches are happening more and more. Uh, with more launches, there'll be more options. And I think there will be some bit of a pull factor it is very, very tough to electrify motorcycles. Uh, just to give you a context, a theoretical range for a Splendor is seven to 800 kilometers. And with higher power and higher range, it is still slightly cheaper than Activa, which is the largest selling ice scooter in India. So, so I think to electrify a motorcycle, you need a much larger battery and that will significantly increase the cost and the weight of the vehicle. So it will be a very big challenge to uh, electrify motorcycles, large part of the market will find it tough to electrify, which is why our estimates for FI 28 are around 20%. But the good thing is even 20% from the current 6-7% means that the EV market will grow at 30-40% to 40 CAGR for the next 5-6 to six years. Mm. Uh, well, uh, that was a good discussion. You know, guys, we were talking about last week also, we were talking about Ola, right? And uh, what does it mean for the other uh, two-wheeler companies? Maybe we're all looking at it uh, in the wrong way because uh, with the question has been whether it hurts the traditional hero and Bajaj, etc. Uh, but uh, can it benefit in the sense, can, can Ola's valuation rub off on uh, the other, the other yeah, companies? Yeah. Remember, hero especially has a 35% stake in Aether. Mm. Aether has about, a, I think, 15-20% market in electric vehicles. Uh, so, you know, Ola has doubled. I don't know what Aether is valued at. Can, uh, and this is a good, it's a strong market. It, it's looking at what can go right. Nobody's looking at what can go wrong. Mm. Uh, so, I don't know if there's a quick uh, sort of buck to be made trading rally. Yeah. But it's entirely possible that uh, if this goes on, uh, Ola is, goes, we'll have to do the numbers, but it's possible that at least Long term, whatever happens, happens. But I'm saying, uh, you know, maybe there is a there's a, there's a trade here on the oh. upside rather than on the downside. That's hero basically on the back of what ha what's happening with uh, Ola. No, absolutely. But I think Prashant, the point that you made last week as well, that's a point that I don't think the incumbents can ignore either, <coughs> because 88 uh, percent growth yeah. uh, just selling scooters last year, FY24. 32% growth first quarter, just selling scooters. Yeah. Now by next Diwali, when they get into the bike space, I mean, will those numbers start looking bigger and bigger? And most analysts on the street are expecting costs to go down, margins to improve, more mm. profits, because they'll start making their own batteries. I mean, it is. Uh, it sounds actually too simplistic, but 92% is the stock price appreciation. So let's put that to Deepan Mehta, really. How do we wrap our heads around what's happened with Ola uh, in just six trading sessions alone? But hey, that's what they call a bull market, right? Dipin, hi, welcome to the show. So it's over to you now. Yeah, Surbi, that's what they call a bull market. <clears throat> and why just double it can triple and quadruple also. I have seen Harshad Mehta rally. I have seen the dot-com bubble also. And that time also a lot of stocks didn't make sense. But they kept on rallying because of very heavy uh, speculative activity and a lot of trader interest. And it's an easy trade in Ola Electric for the traders, you know, because there's so much of concentrated buying. And when stock starts to hit circuit, automatically it attracts a lot of players who just want to buy just before it hits the circuit, hold it for the next day and then sell it off at a, at a premium of 4 or 5% or even higher. So what we are seeing is a, a lot of liquidity flow into one counter. And um, obviously the uh, kind of a float which is there has evaporated, which is why the stock price has gone up the way it has gone up. On a fundamental basis, it's very difficult to justify this kind of a valuation. Great long-term prospects. I believe in the story. And eventually, I think it will start to make solid profits. But there are execution challenges. There are regulatory challenges, product acceptance, and all the expansion plans have to really play out well. So there are sort of risk factors as they are in all businesses. And those are not fully captured in the stock price. So if you're a trader, you're an investor in Ola Electric, by all means, remain invested. You may trade in it. But a new investor entering at this price, I'm not sure he can uh, make a good return over a long period of time. 
what is your view on the impact Ola's uh, motorbike, electric motorbike will have on incumbents? Because Ola's priced it very aggressively. It starts at 75,000 and the cheapest uh, motorbike is I think at one lakh or a little more than that. So the pricing is very aggressive. So will it hurt any of the other incumbents? See, Nima, I'm not really an expert on consumer trends over here, so I really can't say. And actually, Nigel has driven a motorcycle. I haven't. All I can say is that my next car is going to be an EV. That's for sure, so I can assess that. But whether an electric motorcycle will be a success, I'm not so sure. Globally, it's not. Even globally, even two-wheeler EVs have not been a, such a great success. Or, but that's because uh, it's a very narrow market, small market globally. But yes, you know, I mean, who knows? Uh, stranger things can happen. And the important thing is that now Ola Electric is a complete platform, you know, so they will offer two wheelers, they will offer motorcycles also, and who knows, they may go to three wheelers as well in future. And that's important because they'll capture all the segments of the market. And uh, sometimes these niche plays also work out very well, as I've seen in Aisha Motors 10 years ago. Nobody could believe that a premium motorcycle could sell, but it did. So who knows, it could happen with a EV motorcycle as well. And one, one needs to wait and see, but on the whole, I think, uh, you know, the more important aspect is that, you know, what are the risk factors at these levels and have they got captured in the stock price? Okay, let's see. Uh, let's uh, move on and talk about Voltas. That's another big mover, up nearly 5-6%. Strong Q1 numbers, uh, brokerages too have raised the target price post the conference call. Sudarshan is back with us for more on Voltas. Sudarshan. So Voltas has hit record high today and as stock continues to see buying after a strong set of earnings for Q1 and healthy management commentary. Talking about the earnings, Q1 was led by a healthy performance by UCP business. The segment saw healthy volume growth that was almost at more than 67% and also it has gained market share. Market share for Q1 has come in more than 20%. For FY25, company maintains high single digit margin guidance. Talking about the brokers, most of them continues to have bullish stance first one is Nomura. It has a buy call with a target of rupees 1857 per share. It says growth outlook remains strong and it has raised FY25 UCP revenue growth to 30% from 26% earlier and it adds priority of market share gain or margin by the company is a step in the right direction. Jefferies too has a buy call with a target of rupees 1770 per share. It has raised FY25-26 EPS estimates by 10 to 12 percent. UBS has a buy call and target is raised to 1960 per share. It says companies optimistic on demand for Voltpack products in Q3 FY25 led by festive demand. MS has equal weight call with a target rupees 1225 per share. It says company guides for high single digit margin in UCP business that is given elevated competition that company is seeing in the segment. Kotak 2 has a sell call with a target of rupees 1100 per share. It says limited margin expansion and unchanged guidance indicates intense competition, but it has raised estimates by 11 to 14 percent. CLS also has an underperformed call, but it has raised target to 1310 per share. Goldman Sachs also has a sell call and target is 1310 per share it says margin may have limited room to surprise positively in the future but sustainability of ordering will be key for voltas in near to medium term thank you very much for that voltas up 65 percent this year and it's doubled in the last one year uh Dipan, q1 numbers were strong uh, as sudarshan pointed out we've seen a lot of eps upgrades uh, post the Q1 numbers, but going forward, brokerages have flagged off that margin expansion is limited uh, since the company is focusing on regaining its market share. So re-rating potential could be limited. That's what the bearish argument is. Uh, Voltas, after this kind of a rally, where do you stand? So I think it's a great long-term story and the summers are not going to get any cooler, it's going to get warmer. So the next season may be even better for the air conditioning companies, including Voltas. Also, the projects business has got re-energized with all these data centers and so much of urbanization. And they're winning good orders in the Middle East as well. So from a long term, the business has great dynamics. But look, valuation at 117 or there about times trading 12 months. I don't know whether it, uh, the risk return profile favors you. At correction, very positive on all these air conditioning companies across the board, be it a Havels or even IFB Industries has got air conditioning business. And even some of the contract manufacturers like PG Electroplast, Amber Industries, you should have one or two of these stocks in your portfolio if you don't have them. But I would wait for a 15-20% type of a correction when there is some amount of margin of safety. 
But all this entire industry, this uh, this uh, air conditioning industry, are uh, very positive on that. But as I said, I think uh, wait for a correct entry price. Entry price. Mm. Deepan, uh, long list of movers today, right? Uh, and uh, I'm going to just read these out, and if anything strikes a chord, way in. <laughs> There's uh, Angel One, ten percent. Uh, you know, Gravita. I think saw a recent initiation. We'll have these stocks up. Uh, Gravita is up eleven percent. Uh, stocks at about twenty four fifty one. It's come up uh, very quickly. Last uh, what four days from uh, seventeen hundred. Stocks at twenty four fifty. So that's fast paced. There is uh, Boripur Laboratories, which has uh, come up to about sixty eight rupees. Uh, you know, Cams is another one which is up another seven percent. Keytex is up forty percent in three days flat. Uflex is up about twelve percent today. Again, I mean, Uflex was uh, at five sixty two days back. It's at seven fifty today. Uh, you know, just uh, incredible. Edelweiss is another one. I mean, I think it started at sixty bucks. I mean, it was at sixty bucks about six trading sessions back. Uh, it's at ninety today. Uh, so that's a very large move coming through. And a beaten down name like IIFL, which is of course still waiting for the RBI clearance on their gold lending business. Uh, of course, it had com com it had been completely sold out uh, from 5:30 to you know levels of about uh, under 400. It's come up to a more respectable 450 kind of levels now. So that's a big one right there. Deepan, anything interesting here? Well, see, I think you can classify them into two groups: IFL and Edelweiss going up probably because these are nice low PE stocks which still uh, can generate some amount of growth. They have outperformed their peer group. And Edelweiss, especially, has got other ancillary businesses also, like asset reconstruction, which are quite interesting. So yes, I think you know you could see, you are seeing P rating over there. Other than that, the likes of uh, you know other companies you named, I think something positive going for them. Uflex, we've seen across the board all this flexible uh, film manufacturing companies are done very well. Um, cyclical upswing, you may say. Gravitas because of expansion, good corporate numbers. Uh, also, Angel One, I think the threat of uh, derivatives volume gradually getting priced in. So something positive is happening, and investors are on on the lookout for new ideas or some positive trend. And these companies are in the limelight just now for various reasons. So they are being bid up higher and higher. I don't think any of them the valuations are completely out of whack, like say Ola Electric. So if you're an investor, I'd remain invested in these companies and look for the next fresh uh, ideas. You know, which um, traders or investors will target. And typically, that company has to be a reasonable valuation, and it has not should not have rallied like you know the way other stocks have rallied. Like you know, if your stock has gone up 10, 20 times or so, it's best to avoid because the correction will eventually take place. Or look for companies where some you know positive news flow can be expected in terms of new order wins because now the elections are over and we could expect a lot of new order flow on the engineering construction side as well. Mm. Okay, it's a good day for mid caps really. Uh, got that point. Uh, just to add to Prashant's list, two more stocks, uh, matrimony.com, something we don't discuss too often. Matrimony has hit, I think, 20% uh, today. Very volatile, but the last couple of sessions have seen the stock fly higher. There you go. There's a circuit on matrimony. And the one that we were discussing last week, Panacea Biotech. Remember, it started rallying. It's a small stock. started rallying because they're doing clinical trials for a dengue vaccine. Market got excited. Even this uh, this afternoon, there's follow-through buying on Panacea. So it's, a, it's basically, it's a good afternoon. For mid caps Matrimony and small caps. Shadi season is back. It's coming. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's coming. <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> perhaps some excitement ahead of that. But yeah, excitement all around in the mid cap and small cap universe today. Deepan, we'll thank you on that note. Appreciate you being with us. Have a good rest of the day, and we look forward to connecting again later in the week. Right now, we take a quick break. On the other side, uh, Webb of Sangvi, CEO at uh, ASK Hedge Solutions, joins in with some views on the market.
नहीं अगर उसको अब... Welcome back. So the markets are spending some time around the flat line today. It's been that kind of a session. Nimesh, however, has had an exciting day because he's been, I mean, I think for the most part of it, at the Motilal Oswal conference. Yeah, he's still there joining us from uh, the, the scene of the action. So Nimesh, I know you, you're going to get some guests with you as well and give us a feeler from the inside. But uh, let's talk about the dealing room chat up and what all are you picking up? Very range bound day today. Well, you know, yes, sir, you know, uh, first a bit on the conference, it's been well attended. There is a lot of uh, lot of buzz around as well. I've managed to pick some lot of chatter as well from, from many of those, uh, you know, fund managers. But broadly from a market point of view, uh, it's been a bit of a quiet day of trade. The Nifty is pretty much range bound, but it's the broader markets which is relatively outperform and that's where the action seems to be. Even from a, from the in, at the conference, the, the mood seems to be more, uh, you know, biased towards the broader market structure. There are a lot of, uh, lot of interest, there are a lot of meetings also going around uh, at the Motilal conference, largely in the mid and broad cap, well, uh, mid and small cap sector stock. So that's been the, that's been the key, uh, you know, key takeaway so far, the day one of the conference. Even though know, there are a lot of themes now which have been talked about, uh, the same was the case in the MK conference as well last week. Look at some of those, uh, you know, themes which have done well today. The, the EV theme is doing good, but uh, recycle as a theme has, has been talked about very, uh, very much for the last couple of days. And many of those stocks have done well, the likes of Gravita, the likes of Ganesha Eco, all are buzzing in trade. So th th again, you know, as I said, there is a lot of uh, interest in the, in the broader market and a lot of themes are, 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 is well been discussed. Uh, from a flow perspective, uh, there is going to be a small MOC basket buying is what I understand uh, towards the end. So maybe last half an hour we'll see uh, some impact in the non-nifty stocks uh, from a flow perspective. But broadly, uh, while the market's been, nifty has been consolidating, there is a lot of interest in the broader markets today. Nimesh, you also said that you picked up some chatter while you were there. So tell us a little bit more on individual stocks, some tidbits. Well, Ima, you know, the big theme seems to be blocks, you know, uh, there are so many indications of large blocks coming in, or for that matter, large blocks which have been done today. So the first one is Zygal. We saw a large block that blocked, blocked it in that particular name. Nearly 4% equity got changed hands. I understand uh, the, the venture capitalist was a seller in today's block, so this close is really quite interesting. Second, a couple of large blocks expected in, in, in the next few days. One is, uh, uh, one is Zomato and the other one is Interglobe. Both have highlighted in the past that, you know, maybe you'll see large blocks for Interglobe, the reason being uh, the, the Ganwal lockup of five months has got over. So now anytime the block can come, and again, Ganwal could be a, a potential seller in that, in that particular block. And again, there is going to be a 150-day lockup. That's been the trend in the past blocks. And even, even for that matter, in Zomato, there has been a strategic investor who's looking to sell a large block in Zomato as well. So again, that, there could be a potential block there as well in the days to come. The other large block which is going to come and it's potentially going to be a clean out trade uh, is going to be in Kalyan Jewelers. Again, the private equity uh, investor has been a seller in the past, but now it looks like 
is going to be a clean out trade in Kalyan jewelers, which can come very soon. So that's again a large potential block to track. Uh, the other, uh, from a flow perspective, couple of stocks. First is Trent. Uh, while you know everybody uh, argues about valuations and the way the stock has doubled in the last six months, even at these levels, I understand there are block bids and some large global funds are looking to buy into Trent and they are looking for for blocks as well. So. Trend has been buzzing larger and back of very strong buy flows from larger global investors. And the, uh, the other one is uh, Hero Motor Corp. The management was at the Motilal conference as well, spoke uh, about uh, about the outlook and, and they were quite confident about the next few quarters. But again, from a from a flu perspective, I understand one of the leading long only fund was an active seller in uh, Hero Motor Corp. That's largely over. And now I understand some domestic mutual funds are looking to buy as well. So that's the reason why even Hero Motor Corp is buzzing in trade today. Okay, all right, uh, Nimesh, have fun. <laughs> and we look forward to the next conversation, uh, which uh, we're going to come back to you for in just a bit from now. Lots of blocks, and uh, why not, right? Markets are uh, buoyant. Uh, Interglobe, Zomato, and others as well. Webber Sangvi is CEO at ASK Hedge Solutions. He's with us. Webber, uh, good to have you with us here. Good afternoon. Thanks for your time. Uh, you know, again, uh, market's doing well, but, you know, it's more measured, right? Uh, it's not uh, a race straight to the top, uh, more measured. I mean, the U.S. is, I think, in, in uh, it saw a bit of a bigger swoon, uh, but it's also recovered very fast. The S&P sits just 2% away from its highs. What's your sense, uh, Webov? Are we looking at a bit of an uptrend here, bu building an uptrend here over the next uh, few weeks? No, Steve, Prashant, I think uh, this week uh, there are important events, including the Jackson Hole. Uh, let's see what come out of, comes out of that. However, if you also see that the global volatility levels, you know, after the recent spike which had happened has kind of cooled off along with your domestic volatility levels as well. So what effectively happens is basically that money gets kind of start, starts getting deployed again. Uh, and you will see some, and or probably this is some amount of reflection of the confidence in terms of the data which is kind of expected going forward. So we do think that uh, you know uh, you know the, the chances are there that we may see uh, possibly uh, a shorter term upswing uh, because of the cool off in terms of the volatility levels. Having said that, uh, you know of course valuation is something which uh, everybody is looking on to, uh, so that it, it's going to be a little range bound, uh, you know, with kind of market giving opportunities on a bottom up basis rather than a broad spectrum kind of. Uh, bullishness as we see. Mm. Uh, the market is also latching on to themes. So Nimesh was telling us how recycling, electrification, um, you know, or even these entire you know cooling segments, Voltas, Blue Star, these are stocks which have been gaining a lot of traction. Can you highlight a few themes for us which you like? No, of course. I think uh, the way the market is structured, we do think that uh, consumers, including both consumer discretionary and staples, are something which are likely to do better going forward. Uh, of course, rural uh, uh, rural side of the economy is uh, likely reviving. Uh, and last but not the least is basically that the monsoons have been pretty favorable. So consumers on an overall uh, sector is something which we like. In addition to uh, other non-consensus non kind of sector is basically the IT. So IT consumers, uh, pharma from a bottom-up perspective, are the sectors which uh, you know we would be looking to kind of uh, invest in and if you see the nature of these sectors are largely defensives uh, you know and that is how we are looking at the market currently as well okay got that uh, webov uh, hi good afternoon good to have you on the big debate has been about what's happening in the auto space right with uh, ola really hogging the limelight i mean it's been an absolute stunner since the listing day almost doubling right and one is wondering what kind of disruption we are in for. And, and these stocks have been, um, the likes of Bajaj Auto, they've had a great run in the last one year. Uh, there's also the rural uh, recovery play, which uh, some are sort of, uh, you know, talking about with respect to the likes of Hero Moto. But given uh, what we are seeing, and then let, let's not forget the four-wheeler space, Tata Motors is going to go through a demerger. So there's a lot going on. What is your overall stance on auto? What are you liking, keeping, avoiding uh, in this uh, large side of the market? No, of course, be, I think... Uh... Autos uh, looking at a lot of action within the sector, uh, partly also, you know, kind of euphoric valuations in some of the segments. But uh, when we look at two wheelers, when we look at rural recovery, you will continue to see some amount of good numbers coming on from there. 
uh, in passenger vehicles, uh, though the underlying details uh, have not been very exciting, uh, we'll wait for that to kind of recover. But uh, in the advent that when the monsoons are pretty uh, uh, neat, I think uh, we may see some amount of revival also happening into tractor segment. Of course, CV, uh, CV also have been continuing uh, giving the kind of robust volumes on a month-on-month -month basis. Uh, but it's like, I mean, in some ways it is kind of diverse where PV is not performing, but the rest of the segments are performing. And lastly, that the commodity prices in fact, uh, you know, which had happened in the last quarter, whether it is continuing going forward as well or not, is something yet to be seen. So uh, mixed trends uh, with uh, certain pockets kind of giving you the opportunity to kind of probably trade in in this. What about banks? Where do they stand in your portfolio? Because they've been testing everyone's patience. You find value in it, but uh, you know it's just not rewarding investors so far. No, we've been actually you know uh, consistent with our view, saying that banks we are kind of neutralist to probably slightly negative as well. Uh, the reason is that you know here is a situation where we've seen best of interest margins you know, best of credit growth and best of credit uh, asset quality cycle as well. Incrementally, what we may see is basically one pressure on growth or margins purely because you have to have, uh, you know, higher cost deposits. And lastly, that from a personal loan segment in, in cert certain pockets, including your credit cards, uh, we are seeing in MFIs, we are seeing some amount of pressure on the asset quality as well. So going forward, probably, you know, within a year, we may see earnings kind of, uh, earning estimates kind of getting downgraded in this whole segment. Of course, the valuations have been reasonable, uh, but I think that may stay reasonable, um, you know, in absence of strong FPI buying coming on to the Indian markets. However, if FPI market, I mean, if FPI kind of investor interest comes back, then you may see some amount of traction, but otherwise I think we should be uh, neutrally at, at best, you know, in this sector. Mm. Let's pull up metal stocks. I mean, the Nifty Stock. Metal Index is uh, spiking as we speak, and uh, I think it's up uh, about 1.8%. Uh, and uh, let's just have these names, uh, Tata Steel and JSW Steel from the steel space. But uh, Vedanta, of course, I mean, there's, uh, you know, a, a stock specific, a company specific reason as well, the stake sale in Hindustan Zinc and deleveraging, etc. That's another story. Let's look at Hindalco uh, and a, a few others as well. Uh, Tara, I think, was up three. Vedanta is up almost three, uh, and uh, there are uh, Hindalco is up about uh, almost four percent now uh, at uh, this point in time. Uh, Weber, any any thoughts here? I mean, it's a global-facing sector, and I was reading this comment from uh, the, the Chinese steel major Bao Steel, warning of uh, severe stress uh, for the steel industry at least. And and uh, they produce about seven percent, seven eight percent of uh, world, uh, you know, global steel. Uh, now that's of course common coming from Chinese steel maker. I don't know what the dynamics here are, and and what impact that that could have. But stocks are doing well today. Any thoughts, Weber, on the space? You know, I will not go by the temporary kind of uh, momentum on the metal space base, especially the base metal. Uh, my sense is basically when in a, in in a scenario when from a global perspective. Uh, we are not looking at good growth in terms of the economic numbers, and especially from China, where you know which kind of leads the whole metal pricing. Uh, my sense is basically you may have a tactical trade here or there, but from a medium to medium term basis at least, uh, we would not be keen, uh, you know, getting into this space. Uh, unless and until I mean you can see stupendous growth coming back, uh, which is unlikely to see. My sense is this sector will continue to remain under pressure. So at every kind of uh, you know rise, uh, I think you will see continued pressure coming on to this names. All right, uh, you know we we'll leave it there. Uh, thank you very much, Weber, for joining us and uh, running us through uh, that perspective uh, point taken. Bit of a tactical move here, according to Weber, as far as steel and metals are concerned. We we'll take a break. We are back on the other side. We'll be joined by a panel of guests from the sidelines of the Motila Roosevelt 20th Annual Global Conference. Uh, and we'll have Nimesh conducting their interview. Stay tuned. Coming up.
Welcome back. Mitesh is back with us for a few BTST calls. Mitesh. So I have a couple of metal names on the list and Hind Copper is one of them. And that's also something which we have recommended to our clients. So disclaimer that there could be vested interest. Uh, BTST here with a stop at 320 for targets of 330. And the other one is JSW Steel. Uh, that's a BTST with a stop at about uh, 905 for targets of 935. Okay, all right. Uh, <clears throat> uh, steel and metals is what we were discussing and some trades coming through in that space from Mitesh. Uh, Alan Kim is partner at ARK Impact Asset Management and Atul Mehra is fund manager at Motila Uswal AMC. Uh, they're sitting down with my colleague Nimesh. Nimesh, over to you. Uh, thanks, Prashant. As you rightly pointed out, you know, interesting uh, to get uh, different perspectives on the market. One is uh, Kim, oh, he's from Korea and uh, Atul is uh, from the Motila Uswal AMC. Uh, Kim, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, you, you've been managing a lot of money in Korea, but you've also looked at Indian investments for a while now. Uh, sitting outside India, what is your view on India currently from a valuation perspective and from an opportunity perspective? Yes. So for us, I mean, I speak for Korean investors. So for us, India is a beacon of, you know, high growth. So compared to Korean market, it, it, investors sense uh, high growth and excitement uh, from Indian market. And... But in terms of valuation, um, it's the, the multiple, absolute level of multiple itself is quite different, a lot higher here in India. So I think that's becoming a sort of a horror for many Korean investors to accept. Sure. Uh, I understand uh, outside Korea, the, the other big investment for you uh, is India in the emerging market. Of course, US is the other big mm -hmm. investment for you. Uh, what has been changed from a Korean investor point of view uh, looking at uh, investing into India? Right. So I think the biggest change um, is that Korean investors are now seeing exits from Indian markets. So before, um, whenever they invested in other emerging markets, exit has, has always become an issue um, where IPOs are not happening. And even if it did, the liquidity was not enough for the exit to be actually made. Uh, whereas Indian market, it's uh, one of the largest stock markets in the world right now, and there's no more doubt about the exit side of it. So I think that's making Korean investors much more comfortable in investing in Indian private markets. Okay. Alinda, I was looking at a portfolio, and one thing which struck me was uh, your investment in Ola. Uh, it just got listed eight days back, and the money has doubled for... Uh, most of the investors. Uh, a, are you still holding on to Ola? And B, what has made you uh, excited to invest uh, in a company like Ola in India? Right. So, yeah, obviously the investors are very happy uh, about the result. Um, but the, the reason, I think, not just for us, but for, for many of the Korean investors, they, the, their first experience of investing in India was back in 2017, 16 time frame, where digitization of India and mobile pro proliferation of India um, became quite known amongst Korean investors. And um, that story, digital growth story, is quite familiar with Korean investors. We've experienced it ourselves. We've seen it in China. So I think it was, meant for many of us, it was easier for us to imagine how India trajectory will um, grow uh, from there. So that's when uh, we got interested in uh, those types of companies in India. But, you know, if you can share your uh, experience on have you invested back in Korea in any of those uh, EV, EV bike companies or EV motor companies? And what has been the, the performance there for you all? And was that a uh, reason for you all to invest uh, into Ola in India? Oh, uh, absolutely. It's still loss making, that's why. Yes, it's still loss making, but it's a different story uh, compared to Korea because Korean company EV chain, chain is mostly focused on the manufacturing side of it. Sure. And it's looking at the global, um, you know, customer base. Whereas India, we are focusing more on how Indian consumers are using the service itself. So um, the two aspects are quite different. One where Korean EV manufacturers are, you know, clearly riding the global growth cycle. Whereas India, uh, we're expecting more of a Indian middle income consumers growing and using the service itself. Sure. Uh, Atul, if I can ask you the same thing, uh, Ola is now not a small cap. You manage a large cap fund at Motila Loswal, a uh, five and a half, six billion dollar market cap now. Uh, what is your take on, uh, I understand you can't talk about stocks, but in general on the EV space in India, and would you look to invest in this kind of opportunities? So, uh, th firstly, thanks for having me on the show. So, yes, yeah, so in terms of EV, if you look at it as a theme, it is a theme which is evolving. Yeah. We're already seeing it in case of two-wheelers, the penetration, especially on the scooters, is about 16% uh, on all new sales. So we are seeing that increasingly 
especially for the vehicles which are capable to be on the low, uh, smaller battery sizes, the adoption is much faster. Uh, wherever you move to a higher battery, larger battery size, that is where things get more expensive because the largest component in the manufacturing of an electric vehicle is a battery. So the use cases uh, will keep evolving as and when like battery prices over a period of time decline. But so far, like the anything which has a small battery size to do with it, like the scooters is the prime example, that is absolutely taking off. Like we are at 16 percent now, maybe this can be 50 percent in the next three to five years time and that is where we are seeing uh, a great amount of traction sure. so so yeah we are uh, looking at multiple spaces within the ecosystem uh, and, and I think like things will evolve having said that I would also like to add that uh, I think also the automobile market in India will be a story of coexistence of multiple technologies like we have seen that even in developed markets like US where hybrid is growing share over the last few years yeah. so uh, so we believe that even in India, there is a chance that you will have multiple technologies coexist um, and um, and it will not necessarily be EV alone because we also have to understand from the perspective that um, supply chain, for instance, like the most of the supply chain for EV in India or globally is the origin of supply chain is in China. Right? So, so a lot of, like we see the geopolitical issue arising from most part of the world, most countries also, I think, will look to diversify their um, their their ecosystem and not having an over dependence on one over another. Right, right. But you know, uh, in general, for the autos, I was reading some reports, and many of the Celsius analysts now believe that best is in the price. Uh, there could be some distortion, and and you know, volumes could decline from here. A couple of them have actually downgraded the auto sector to neutral now right. after the quarter one earnings. What's your general take? Because we, I heard the hero management here, he was quite confident. Yes. Are uh, you holding some auto names as well within your portfolio? What's your general sense on, on the auto sector stocks? So uh, I think in terms of from a medium to longer term perspective, things look absolutely fine. Because India, if you look at it, it still remains quite underpenetrated uh, on, on the four-wheeler side. So, so overall, if you look at it from a growth perspective, from a medium term perspective, things are fine. Now in the near term, Depending on uh, analyst to analyst on the sell side, obviously uh, things differ on views on the near term. But I would believe that uh, the medium term story looks uh, really good in terms of autos in India. So we own uh, some of the uh, automobile manufacturers uh, in India and we believe like uh, things from a medium term perspective uh, look very good. Sure. Atul, uh, while you manage uh, the large cap funds, I want to ask Alan about the opportunities in the mid and small cap. You've been doing some shopping in the, in the broader market stocks within India in the mid and small cap space. I understand you all have uh, you all bought into the uh, Morpen QIP as well. Uh, generally, from the broader market stocks in the, in the mid and small cap, what has been your experience so far? And uh, are you looking to aggressively look at investing into the Indian mid and small cap companies? Yes, we are. Uh, I think for us, um, the Indian small and mid cap uh, gives a very unique um, alpha creation opportunity where the the growth of the company itself is in the you know tens and even hundreds of percentages uh, per year, and that those types of opportunities are simply not present in other developed markets. So I think in that aspect, having finding those jewels, if you will, um, even just one or two of them would help our portfolio very much. So in that sense, we're we're very keen on finding those opportunities. Okay. Uh, Alan, uh, the, uh, the other uh, interesting thing would be uh, the lot of uh, Korean companies are going to list into India. Hyundai, for example, is looking for an IPO. Uh, would you look to invest uh, in, 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 in India, in, in Hyundai IPO? For that, uh, it's really ironical because um, Hyundai itself, it's, the, its headquarters is obviously listed in Korea and their PE multiple is at mid-single digits. Okay. Whereas, I don't know about the, how the Indian IPO is structured, yeah. but I, I presume the multiple here would be much higher than it is in Korea. So for Korean investors, I think um, they'll judge that hey, if headquarters are trading at this multiple, we'll rather invest in Korea. But I think it's a very smart move for Hyundai itself uh, to be able to raise this much capital in uh, such a lucrative market. Sure. Uh, Atul, uh, you've also participated in a lot of the IPOs recently, and some of them have done really well for you. Absolutely. Uh, is that an opportunity which, as a large cap fund manager, you find very attractive? That there is so much of IPO pipeline that will help you to invest into larger companies. Yes. So, uh, so, so I think the key is even in a large cap mutual fund, 
eighty percent of the fund has to be invested in large cap companies, but twenty percent we are we are allowed by the regulator to invest in any market cap company. So, so in the fund that we've been running, uh, uh, our fund has so far been the best performing large cap fund since inception, uh, with eight percent outperformance. Now the key is we have been able to spot a number of new IPO opportunities, um, and we have a number of exciting new businesses which are coming to the capital markets. Like first in like for example, a shared workspace, uh, then uh, telecom, a regional telecom, uh, and lifestyle. Hexacom has been a great investment for you, yes. right? Hexacom has has been great as well. So we are seeing a number of new interesting businesses coming to the market, and um, and we have been able to uh, identify and. And add those stocks to our portfolio, which have generated the returns as well. Sure. So I think the, the IPO pipeline looks very strong, and the lineup is like uh, a, re a really large one, which will help us identify new names as well. Atul, Alan, uh, thank you very much for joining us. We're just running short of time, close to market closing. But thank you very, thank much, you very much for sharing your perspective. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks for having us. All right, Namesh, thank you for that conversation. Uh, indeed, a very, very interesting one. Well, the market hasn't moved too much. Still about 40 points up on the Nifty. We do need to take a very quick break. We'll come back and we'll be in the final leg. I will get you some more stock ideas in just a bit. Welcome back. Just a couple of minutes to, to go before the day closes out. We have Anand Tandon joining in to take us through the last leg. Anand, uh, good to have you on. You know, today's been really all about individual stocks, some news base, some earnings, etc. But uh, I just wanted to discuss uh, a PSU company, BEML, in case you've had a look at it recently. I mean, some of these stocks which are involved in metro construction, they got really excited because the cabinet has approved, um, you know, more projects across different states. Uh, your thoughts on whether there's still a play here 
uh, BEML or any other uh, private sector name perhaps uh, that would benefit from such orders? Well, I don't know how much quantity of stuff GML can supply. I can tell you that, for example, in metros, even something as basic as a sliding glass door, which costs roughly one crore per panel, is imported. So, you know, I'm not sure that we have any kind of significant advantage on technology for any of these companies. Maybe they will be getting some orders in terms of a little bit of the, uh, you know, motor parts or whatever. But uh, does it make a lot of uh, sense to be investing based on that alone? I don't know. The cost per metro, uh, you know, is now ranging between four to 500 crores per kilometer. And uh, that makes metros generally very expensive and larger, largely prohibitive. So, you know, you would have to see how these uh, uh, projects pan out as well. Overall, I don't, I don't think I've changed my view overall on any of these uh, companies. Largely, they, you cannot keep on bidding them up on the basis of a new order or a new order pipeline. The pipelines are such that they are not able to implement most of whatever they have uh, already as an order supply. So it doesn't really make sense to already increase an inflated multiple for them. Uh, Anand, afternoon. Um, you know, many of these mid-cap banks, financials like Ujjivan Small Finance Bank, RBL, Equita Small Finance Bank, Bandhan Bank, these are stocks down 20 to 30 percent since the beginning of the year. Anything outside of the large private sector banks that catches your attention at current levels? Well, I think among the non-bank financials, the, the housing finance companies are showing better numbers. Uh, you know, after the merger of HDFC, you have to look for other companies. And some of the new age ones are not doing too badly either. In, so while the uh, the others like LIC, GIC, et cetera, are not particularly uh, expensive, the new companies are all are growing perhaps a little faster. While one has to be a little circumspect on their ability to uh, have a matured portfolio, uh, the reality is that the numbers still are showing up quite dramatically. And hopefully, unless they are, uh, you know, unless they are financing chores, you will have real estate which you can actually sell if you have to. The street is also very excited with the potential of uh, India's electrification journey. Uh, which is the best way to play it? <laughs> there aren't too many players that you could actually be investing in in terms of electrification. Uh, you know, the, uh, I mean, obviously the equipment manufacturers would be the way to, that you would look at it, but the equipment manufacturers are already priced to perfection and then some. So if you still want to uh, continue to play that momentum, then obviously you could uh, go there. Uh, the likes of BHL, et cetera, are humongously overpriced. It is not as if they are marginally overpriced. So, you know, the uh, the rest of it would be in the form of transformers and uh, perhaps meters, which are smaller players, and one could perhaps look for some of those opportunities there. But I think, again, you know, if you are looking at uh, even small companies in transformers, et cetera, they are reasonably well-priced. Uh, they are not as strict at 65 times, but even then they are 35 times. And remember, this is largely a business which is highly cyclical and you're probably at the top of the cycle. So yeah, but those those would be ones that you would be looking at, essentially the smaller equipment manufacturers. Uh, got that. Uh, uh, Anand, uh, uh, thanks for that for now, but stay with us. We'll continue our discussion in just a bit. Let me just quickly wrap up uh, the market action here. Uh, you know, 40 points higher is where uh, the Nifty will be. Uh, so off the day's high, so the day's high was uh, at 24.638. Uh, uh, so almost at that uh, sort of gap zone and then of course the market pulled back a little bit. Nifty Bank, no such luck, still uh, it's not even taken out the swing high. The 20 day moving average is a little further away. Uh, but of course broader markets doing well. Uh, the small cap index up just under 2% uh, in terms of trade. And I think the sector which uh, did well of course were uh, sectors which did well was the, was the metal space and here the uh, sort of uh, move was continuous but it really picked up pace from about uh, you know what uh, 12 30 or so uh, when the index started moving up two percent gains there on the metals index oil and gas was up about one and a half uh, and of course PSUs uh, the, the actually energy PSEs PSU bank all up about one one and a quarter percent CPC index about one percent plus as well IT index big gains on Friday uh, but uh, it was up about almost just under 1% today as well. Uh, so continuing to perform once again here. I think uh, that's essentially the market uh, wrap and market close for you. Uh, thank you very much for staying with us here on uh, this edition of Closing Bell, uh, Closing Bell. But Markets Forward is coming up after a quick break. Reema and I'll take you through that action in just a bit. <laughs>